One of Donald Trump's biggest campaign promises was to significantly expand the US military. Since he has become president, he has done just that. Since 2011, defense spending decreased significantly over the next five years, dropping around 20% from 2011 to 2016. Which makes sense in a way. In 2011, the US was fighting a war in Libya. They had the most amount of troops deployed to Afghanistan, over 100,000, and still had a large presence in Iraq from the Iraq War. In the years since, the war in Libya was ended. In 2016, troop levels in Afghanistan had decreased to only 10,000, and the US pulled out of Iraq at the end of 2011. For the 2019 defense budget, the US Senate just voted to approve a significant increase in spending, and the bill will now be sent to President Trump. The total defense budget is $716 billion. One of the major stated reasons for the increase is to counter an increasingly powerful Chinese military. Chinese defense spending has rapidly grown over the years, from $15 billion in 2000, $100 billion in 2010, and now in 18, over $200 billion. The majority of the US defense spending goes toward operations and maintenance, accounting for 41%, 22% of the budget for military pay, 21% for procuring weapon systems and platforms, and 14% on research and development. Just a note, if you're wondering why this number says 686 and not 716 billion, it's because this number does not include an extra 30 billion that is classified as other national defense spending. For the pay and maintenance section, the budget plans to provide a 2.6% military pay rise, which is the largest in nearly a decade, and 10.5 billion towards military base and weapons facility construction and improvements. 69 billion is going toward what is called overseas contingency operations. This is for the war in Afghanistan, which amounts to 46.3 billion, 15.3 billion for the war against Daesh or ISIS, 6.5 billion for operations in Europe with the objective of countering Russia, and just under a billion for general counterterrorism operations elsewhere. And then we have the most interesting section, at least for me, procurement. As far as weapon platforms, the budget provides funding for 15 of the new KC-46 tankers, two dozen F-A-18 Super Hornets, 60 Apache attack helicopters, two Virginia-class attack submarines, three Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, over 5,000 joint light tactical vehicles, and 77 F-35s, among others. According to the budget, the price of the F-35, an aircraft which has been heavily criticized for its cost, among other things, has come down significantly. In 2015, the cost for the 35 aircraft purchased was $186 million each. In 2019, the cost will be $114 million apiece. I think it's also worth noting that the price per aircraft varies greatly depending on variant. The F-35C, the Navy's version, costing $134 million each, compared to the Air Force variant, the F-35A, costing only $102 million each. For missile defense, the US is purchasing four new GBIs, the weapon designed to shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles, 82 THAAD interceptors, which defend against medium-range ballistic missiles, 43 of the SM-3 interceptors, a naval missile that also defends against medium-range ballistic missiles, and 240 Patriot Pac-3 interceptors, a land-based missile designed to shoot down short and medium-range ballistic missiles. As for munitions and missiles, the US is buying over 43,000 JDAM kits. These kits attach to gravity bombs, turning them into precision-guided weapons. Over 7,000 Hellfire missiles are being bought, a weapon which is usually fired from the Apache helicopter, drones, and other platforms. 6,800 small diameter bombs, a glide bomb with a range of over 100 kilometers, although this depends on speed and altitude launched from, over 1,200 storm breakers, or a small diameter bomb too, which has an onboard radar, IR, and laser for guidance, giving it the ability to hit moving targets, 360 JASMs, a long-range stealthy cruise missile, several hundred air-to-air -air missiles, including the Sidewinder and AMRAAM, almost 10,000 guided multiple launch rocket system rockets, and 37 of the new LRASM, the US's new long-range stealthy anti-ship missile based on JASM. Also, I didn't see it anywhere in the 2019 budget, but typically the US buys 150 to 200 Tomahawk cruise missiles every year. Last year though, they did mention that they would begin mid-life recertification on the Block 4 missiles starting in 2019. 
and planning on adding a maritime strike capability to existing missiles, enabling the Tomahawk to be used as an anti-ship missile. I did find some other interesting information though. Over 8,000 Tomahawks have been built over the years, over 2,000 fired in combat, and the US currently has an estimated 3,000 Tomahawk cruise missiles operational. And finally, research and development. A lot of money is going into investing in future and upgraded systems. Over 2 billion for the B-21, the planned new stealth bomber. Almost 4 billion towards a new ballistic missile submarine class. And 12 billion for missile defense, including SM-3, GBI, THAAD, and Patriot Pac-3. Beyond that, 13.7 billion has been allocated toward funding advanced systems and weaponry including hypersonic weapons, direct energy weapons, electronic warfare, artificial intelligence, space systems, and cyber warfare. So there is a lot in the 2019 budget. Nearly every single line item on the budget has increased over last year. Despite the large increase, the US is actually spending less as a percentage of total GDP on defense. In 2010, for example, the defense budget accounted for 4.5% of the total GDP. In 2019, it is down to 3.1% a more than 30% decline. So in a nutshell, that is what $716 billion can buy you.